Hi, my name is Zach, and I will show you step-by-step -step how to properly prepare a latex sample for validation of DLS instruments. There are many different types of contaminants that can ruin sample preparation, but I will focus on the most troublesome, our invisible enemy, dust. Now to demonstrate how dust can interfere with sample preparation. Here I have taken a sample bottle and simply poured deionized water in it. I will place it next to a prepared clean bottle with the same liquid and shoot a laser through both. Please note the scattering of the laser is caused by dust particles in the liquid arising from cell, cap, or from unfiltered liquid. Sample preparation is the most important step in obtaining good results for both dynamic and static light scan. While the instrument or software is the easiest to blame for poor results, improper sample preparation is usually the culprit. This video will outline in detail the steps necessary to require a relatively dust-free sample. For this guide, a 92 nanometer polystyrene latex standard will be used. These steps will be relevant for electrostatically stabilized samples in water, but proper dilution will need to be determined by the user. These results were obtained using unfiltered tap water with no addition of salt. The effective diameter of 115.7 and the polydispersity index of 0.125 are unacceptably high. As you can see, without proper preparation, sample analysis can be problematic. Please remember safety first and always wear protective eyewear and gloves during the duration of your sample preparation. The first step toward proper sample preparation is in the use of our glassware, syringe, and syringe filter. Use a 0.1 micron aqueous filter. Next, pass about 20 milliliters of deionized water through the filter to remove any particles left on the filter during manufacture. Now take a clean 20 to 30 milliliter bottle with cap and fill with filter 10 millimolar potassium nitrate. Recap. Gently rock the bottle so any dust on the inside of the cap can be washed into the solution for filtering. This dislodges any remaining particles in the liquid on the bottle walls and inside of cap. Repeat the filtering process three times. This solution will be used later. Now to prepare our 92 nanometer polystyrene latex standard. Take your standard and first confirm that it is not expired. Inspect both inside the cap and top of bottle for any dried latex. If any is present, carefully clean with a lint-free wipe. Next, discard two drops of latex and place the third into the 20 milliliters of filtered 10 millimolar potassium nitrate prepared earlier. Make sure to cap the standard and latex suspension immediately. Now, gently rock the suspension back and forth ensuring it becomes homogeneous yet not introducing bubbles. The suspension will become slightly turbid. Finally, we will prepare and fill our sample cuvette for analysis. Fill your cuvette with filtered 10 millimolar potassium nitrate solution and cap it. Take the cuvette and rock it back and forth to help dislodge any dust attached to the interior of the cuvette and cap. Empty the contents to waste. With our now clean cuvette, pour the 92 nanometer polystyrene latex suspension directly into the cuvette. This is done to avoid another potentially dust-laden surface. Your suspension is almost ready for analysis. Turn the instrument on and start software, making sure you set 25 degrees centigrade. Place the sample cuvette into your instrument and wait at least 5 minutes for thermal equilibrium. 
Please be patient as variations in temperature can yield poor results. Make three three minute runs. The mean effective diameter is within three nanometers of 92 nanometers and the polydispersity index is less than or equal to 0.025. As demonstrated, it can be easy to allow contaminants to ruin sample preparation, but with diligent care and preparation, good results can always be had. If you are unfamiliar with light scattering, all the steps taken may seem unnecessary. However, sample preparation can directly affect your results, altering the effective diameter and more significantly the polydispersity index. Good samples yield good results. I hope you found this instructional video helpful and thank you for watching.